So this time around, I want to solve for the limit as x approaches towards negative 4 of x squared minus 16 divided by the absolute value of x minus 4. Now, if I try to do a direct substitution, because that's the first thing that we would always try to do instinctively, we would get 4 squared minus 16 divided by 4 minus 4. And that results uh, in 0 over 0, which tells me that there is most likely a removable discontinuity uh, at that value of x equals to negative 4. Now, uh, the problem is that uh, the bottom, we have an absolute value, and we haven't quite seen something like that before. And the question is, well, how do we deal with it? Um, well, that's where the absolute value of x, if we write it as a piecewise function, would give us a better idea as to what to do. The absolute value of x, we can say the following. This is going to be the same thing as x, so long as x is greater than or equal to 0. But whereas if x is negative, uh, then that means that we would choose negative x then. So this is basically a way to kind of break it into two parts. And the reason why that work is, if you look at the limit as x approaches towards negative 4, x is supposed to be a negative value uh, when we plug it in. So that means that we're going to take this upper part of the piecewise function and do a substitution for this. So that is to say, uh, we can now rewrite the limit as the following. Limit as x approaches towards negative 4, and then we have x squared minus 16 divided by negative x minus 4. And again, you know, basically replacing the absolute value with negative x, so then we can play around with this algebraically. But whereas if I had a something like, say, limit as x approaches towards 4 of x squared minus 16 divided by the absolute value of x minus 4, we can then rewrite that as limit as x approaches towards 4 of x squared minus 16 divided by just x minus 4 because x is equal to 4 or x is approaching towards 4, which tells me that x is going to be always positive. But nonetheless, let's go back to our example over here. We're going to go ahead and solve for what uh, the limit is going to be, and we're going to try to do it by factoring then. So limit as x approaches towards negative 4, the top part, we can factor out uh, x minus 4, and then we also have x plus 4. Whereas in the denominator, we can factor out the negative, and that now gives us x plus 4 as a factor. Those two factors of x plus 4 cancels out from both top and bottom. So now we have left limit as x approaches towards negative 4 of x minus 4 divided by negative 1. Uh, down, we can go ahead and use this direct substitution. So negative 4 minus 4 over negative 1. Uh, the answer would then be equal to 8 then. So that's going to be our limit. Okay, so let's now try something uh, a little bit different uh, where we're going to apply the limit laws to graphs then uh, instead of having some sort of algebraic expression what we're trying to solve for. So here below, you can see two functions. We have f of x on the left and we have h of x on the right hand side. And what I would like to solve for are the following limit problems then. So in Roman numeral number four, I would like to evaluate what happens to the limit as x approaches towards one of f of x plus four times h of x. So again, going by the limit laws that we have, uh, we can now break this into pieces. So then that way we can look at the graph then. Uh, the first part, I'm going to go ahead and change it into the following. I'm going to apply the limit to each part because remember, that was one of the laws that we had from earlier, one of the limit laws. So I can write this as limit as x approaches towards 1 of f of x plus the limit as x approaches towards 1 of 4 times h of x. And to take this a little bit further, we can uh, change that second part into uh, the following using another limit law. We can take the 4 and put it on the outside so that we have 4 times the limit as x approaches towards 1 of h of x. Now we can see what the limit of each piece is and make the direct substitution then once again. Limit as x approaches towards 1 for f of x, if you look at the graph of f of x, it, the y value that it's getting closer to is going to be 1. So that means it's going to be replaced by 1. And then plus 4 multiplied by the limit as h uh, limit as x approaches towards 1 for h of x. So we're going to look at the graph of h of x, and then we're going to get closer and closer to 1. So it looks like the y value is going to be 0. So then that results in 4 times 0. So putting it all together, 1 plus 4 times 0. So that's 1 plus 0. So the answer is equal to 1. 
So let me go ahead and erase this so we can use this again. Uh, let's look at now the second part. The limit as x approaches towards 2 of f of x times h of x. Now, if I try to apply the limit law, just like I did for Roman numeral number 4, uh, you'll notice that there's a uh, discrepancy because when I plug in uh, the following, or if I try to uh, split it into the following, limit as x approaches towards 2 of f of x, multiply by the limit as x approaches towards 2 of h of x. This guy right here, the limit as x approaches towards 2 of f of x, is going to be an undefined thing because uh, you'll notice that the limit coming from the left is not the same as the limit coming from the right. So therefore, this guy is going to be does not exist. Multiply by the limit as x approaches towards 2 of h of x, which we can see is going to be equal to 1. Now, uh, for something like this to happen, I don't actually really like it because you're saying you're taking something that does not exist, multiply by one, and I don't like that because um, in order to do an operation, you have to use a number with another number. So let's go ahead and reevaluate this uh, using our theorem from the limit then. Remember, in order for a limit to exist, the limit coming from the left has to be the same as the limit coming from the right. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and split this into two parts. I'm going to go ahead and first solve for the limit as x approaches towards 2 from the left-hand side of f of x multiplied by h of x. And then I'm also going to solve for, later on, the limit as x approaches towards 2 from the right of f of x multiplied by h of x. Because by looking at the one-sided limit, we can actually see some numerical value and then uh, afterward to be able to come up with a conclusion as to if the limit actually exists or not. So let's look at each part then. So this I can actually use the limit law for multiplication. So that becomes now the limit as x approaches towards 2 from the left of f of x multiplied by the limit as x approaches towards 2 from the left of h of x. We're going to take each one of those, multiply together, and let's see what the answer is. For f of x, as it gets closer and closer to 2 from the left-hand side, uh, that is going to give us negative 2 for the y value. Multiply by the limit as x approaches towards 2 from the left-hand side, uh, that is going to give us, looks like it's going to be 1 in this case. So that is going to be our answer then. So putting these two together, the limit on the left-hand side of x is equal to 2 is going to be equal to negative 2. Now, if I solve for the limit coming from the right and it's going to be the same numerical value, then the limit exists. But if for some reason they're not the same, then that means we can officially then say that the limit does not exist at x equals to 2 then. So once again, applying the limit law for multiplication, we can say limit as x approaches towards 2 from the right-hand side of f of x multiplied by the limit as x approaches towards 2 from the right-hand side of h of x. And now we can look at each part of these graphically as well. Limit as x approaches towards 2 from the right-hand side for f, that is going towards 0 because you can see over here it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis. But whereas for the limit as x approaches towards 2 from the right-hand side of h of x, that looks like it's going towards 1, which is the same thing as the previous limit over here right above it. So 1 times 0, the answer is going to be equal to 0. And right there, now we can officially say that because these two are not going to be the same answers, so therefore the limit does not exist over here. This is going to be now D and E. So that is going to be more of a formal proof that you actually want to take. Okay, uh, let's see. Roman numeral number 6. Uh, evaluate the limit as x approaches towards 2 of f of h of x. So this is a composite function. And again, going by the limit law of what we said, we can take the limit and put it in the inside so that we would get the following. f of the limit as x approaches towards 2 of h of x. And if we do so, uh, we first look at the inside and see where that limit goes to. So for h, as it gets closer and closer to 2, once again, you can see that it's going to 1 for the y value. So that means that this results in giving you f of 1. Uh, and f of 1, according to our graph, is going to be equal to 1. So that is going to be our answer. Now this one is going to be very nice and smooth because at x equals to 1, f is continuous. So that's why we can actually do that. 
in the final example, uh, this one, this is going to be a little bit more trickier to see what actually happens then. Uh, this time, I want to evaluate what happens as limit as x approaches towards 0 of f of x squared. Now, uh, going to the graph of f of x, uh, note that at x equals to 0, you can see that it's going to be does not exist coming from the left and coming from the right. And for the most part, we'll probably think, oh, therefore the limit actually doesn't exist. But this part is actually a little bit tricky because let's think about what you're actually doing for this problem. Uh, limit as x approaches towards 0 basically means that you're trying to plug in values of x that's getting closer and closer to 0, um, uh, and then afterwards you're going to square it. So for example, you're going to go ahead and plug in x is equal to uh, 0 0.1, and then x squared, then you're going to get 0 0.01. If I plug in x is equal to 0 0.01, then x squared is equal to 0 0.0001, and so on and so on. So that's from one perspective. Now, from the other side, I'm going to say, hey, let's go ahead and plug in x is equal to negative 0 0.1. So x squared is equal to 0 0.01. And if I plug in x is equal to negative 0 0.01, then x squared is equal to 0 0.0001. You'll notice that regardless of if you're coming from the right-hand side or if you're coming from the left-hand side, the result is that when you plug in x and then you square it, you're still getting closer and closer to 0. But the way that you're getting closer and closer to 0 is actually from the positive way. Uh, because remember, when you take a number and you square it, it becomes positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a substitution for you to be able to see this a little bit better. Instead of saying x approaches towards 0 for x squared, let's go ahead and do the following then. Consider uh, the substitution then. Let u equal to x squared. So in that case, uh, then what we'll have now is the limit as u approaches towards if x is going towards 0, right, remember, if x is going towards 0, then u is going towards 0 as well. But it's going towards 0 for u from the right-hand side because all of those values right here, as you can see, these u values are all positive. So that's why you have 0 and then the right-hand side of the function f of u. And now that is something that is a lot easier to deal with because this is now saying, hey, I want to know what happens to f as uh, u approaches towards 0 from the right-hand side. And don't get it mixed up. You know, this part right here, uh, x is an independent variable, but, you know, you can actually say that's u, basically the same thing. Uh, nonetheless, regardless of what happens, I'm just really looking at what happens as x approaches towards 0 from the right-hand side. So then the answer is going to be equal to 2 then. So that is going to be our limit then.